All right, so we're here taking a look at one of the most anticipated companies at CES this year, Xreal, who is debuting two products, the Xreal Air Pro 2 and the Xreal Air 2 Ultra, both super cool products that are definitely intended as a competitor to some of the bigger, bulkier VR glasses out there. The Air 2 Pros are described as a display screen. You can play video games, you can watch content, and the Xreal Air 2 Ultras are described as being more for developers. They involve kind of a three panel screen, two cameras on the front that essentially track hand motion. And then it's titanium frame. Allow you to interact with basically various pictographics that it scans and allows you to use as controls. Got that old school kind of like Ray-Ban 1960s look to it. Yes. You're able to look through the viewfinder, you're able to look through the lenses and essentially see little 2D coasters turn into 3D buttons and tools for you to use. It says work, SNS, and then there's a crab. I feel like I don't want to touch the crab. <laughs> for my controls, the left one was a button, the center one was a little trifurcated uh, control stick essentially, and the third one was a spinny thing that allowed me to spin it around and turn various animals into other animals. A dragonfly, a beetle, a ladybug. And looking up at the screen, you would see a little circular cursor in the demo that essentially let you look from panel to panel, from music to weather to stock tickers. Very cool functionality intended for developers. The price two point, the Air 2 Pro is coming in at $499, and the Air 2 Ultra is coming in at $699, so definitely way more affordable than a lot of the competitors out there. I thought it was a cool experience. The look is also something that I found much more appealing than a lot of the other big goggly type stuff. These glasses have a really chic look. They almost have this throwback classic 1960s look. Much prefer that to the other bigger, bulkier goggles that are out there. Gotcha, okay, so it, it sort of recalibrates and puts the screen directly in front of you. All right, so I just tried the Nemo, which is being sold as the world's first spatial computer for productivity. It's this little tiny rectangular object that is about the same size as a mouse, maybe a little bit smaller, in a brown metallic, kind of a cool color. And essentially the way it works is it will connect to any AR headset. It will connect wirelessly via Bluetooth to a mouse and you don't need a monitor for a workspace anymore. It's a complete AR array of multiple screens uh, that you can set up in any way you want. They had it set up with an Excel sheet, a PowerPoint presentation, and a little video display on the right-hand side. And then you can either use the mouse to click through and do work, or you can disengage the mouse and use the computer itself to make selections, use it as a pointer, and then it also has a little track pad on the top and the ability to click on the pad itself. So, pretty cool object. I like the idea of not having to be reliant on all this big hardware, and the idea that in the future, perhaps our workspace is just a keyboard, a little tiny computer, and the glasses we have on our head. I guess my final takeaway is I'm here for a future where you don't need all kinds of big clunky hardware and monitors and screens and computer towers or even laptops where you can just roll into some place with a lightweight keyboard, a tiny little computer and AR goggles and you can do the work with all kinds of screens and functionality. It's pretty rad and I'm here for it. All right, now I'm gonna take a look at a new product by a company called Brellion that bills itself as a display like no other. I have to admit, I'm pretty skeptical about this product. It looks a little bit like a Viewmaster. Let's take a look though. It's really shallow, like shallow. Let's see, it's like, like that, you know? But it looks very wide, very deep. So the thing about the evolution of traditional monitors is that they just keep adding more pixels, but in order to be able to appreciate those more pixels, they have to make the monitor bigger and bigger and bigger because if you cram a bunch more pixels into a small screen, you actually can't appreciate it at all. And if you're sitting at a desk doing work, you don't want to sit in front of a giant 60, 70 inch screen. So this was the problem that they set out to solve. How do you make a bigger display, but keep 
a smaller screen size. And so what we've got here is a 32 inch profile on this thing, a 32 inch display, but they have something called monocular depth so that when you look into the screen, you are getting 110 degrees of view. And if you measure it, 122 inches. It's completely amazing, completely improbable. I have to say that I was super skeptical going into this thing, but seeing the product, it's fantastic. The thing is absolutely fantastic. It's very clear, very vivid, huge screen with a small profile. I'm sold. I would absolutely edit on this. I talked to the founder of the company and he said not only was the defense industry some of the earliest investors in the product, there are also some of his first customers. So really interesting product and I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing more things like it in the future.